Podskis, Veronica here. This is the Pod Sounds Cool Podcast. Here you can find all the tools you need to start your podcast in a smart way or give your existing podcast a boost. Studio Steve and I are podcast nerds, so you're in good hands. Feel free to binge on as many episodes as you want. And also do us a favor and write a review for us on Apple Podcasts or Podchaser. We'll love it if you do. And one last thing before we get into the episode. Registration is open for our podcast course, Smart and Sexy Podcast Launch. We designed the course to help you successfully create a professional sounding and sexy podcast in seven weeks and make your mark in one of the media's fastest growing and creative industries. Our course emphasizes creativity, uniqueness, and strong branding. And I may be a little biased, but this course has everything we wished a course would have offered when we started podcasting years ago. So if you want to find out more information, go to podcastingsmart.com. Okay, sweet announcements aside, let's get to the episode. So you all know I'm an Instagram nerd. I can spend hours reading blogs about Instagram or scrolling down Instagram to see what is trendy and also learning about the latest tricks and tools. This is how I came across Natasha. Natasha is the founder of Soul Studio. Soul Studio is an Instagram studio specializing in storytelling, strategy, and content creation. On her Instagram, Natasha has a gold mine of information about Instagram strategies, entrepreneurship, Instagram tools, and wellness. Her IG story icon is always the first one on my feed. I wanted to interview Natasha in the light of the latest events. As a content creator and business owner, I've been asking myself what is the best way to show up on social media for our communities. Should I mention how distraught I am due to the amount of suffering and loss our world is experiencing? Is my audience interested in listening to my message of hope or how I woke up feeling the pain of the world this morning? Do they need me to be uplifting and matter of fact? Anyway, it's complicated. But before I overwhelm her with all my questions, I wanted to know about her experience as a podcaster. She released her podcast back in January, the Shine Online podcast, and I wanted to hear about her show. Yes, I honestly love it. It's probably one of my favorite parts of my business. Not only being able to have like conversations because mine is definitely interview style, but having conversations with my friends, but also being able to connect with people that I feel like the podcast has brought us together, which has been great. Overall feedback from my audience is that, you know, they love my videos, they love Instagram, like that's a huge part of my brand, but it's just so nice that they I'm more accessible now. Like they can be on the go, they can be, you know, cooking, running, like whatever they're doing and listening to the podcast. So overall, I've loved it. I'm thinking of ways that I can grow it and and collaborate with other podcasters and and it's just been a really fun part of my business. So so far, so good. Natasha's style is so refreshing and real. I've listened to a few episodes of her podcast and I'm always impressed with her guests. She's also fun to watch on Instagram. Natasha keeps it real and honest for us. Besides sharing useful tips and information, she also shares what it is to be a female entrepreneur and how she handles the stress and the ups and downs. Lately, Natasha's focus has been on wellness and being part of events helping her community during this time. I asked Natasha if we should do the same on our social media. There's so many different things to consider. And I think the first thing is think of your own brand morals and ethics, and that will kind of guide you because while some people feel totally fine maybe selling their products right now, maybe it's the perfect time to sell their products because it's, you know, maybe arts and crafts and people are wanting to craft more or maybe a book or a fitness app. Like maybe it's a time to sell or maybe for you, you're like, I just don't feel comfortable selling right now. I want to be offering education or just figuring out what feels good to you because I think we could sit here and talk about what's right and wrong, but I think it just totally depends in a lot of ways. I think another thing is just overall right now is just being as generous as you can in any way that you can. 
And it doesn't have to mean discounting your services, but it could just mean how can you uplift people more and inspire people more? That's really just what I've been focusing on is, you know, making sure I'm educating people and empowering people to make the right decisions when it comes to social media marketing, but also just how can things feel kind of normal in a way and kind of, you know, away from all the chatter about it. So they can go back and see my yellow content, they can feel happy and feel inspired. And that's kind of my way of giving back. I know a lot of online events have been doing digital summits, giving back, donating. So I think just this is the time to be generous. This is also the time to collaborate and just think of how you can be in front of your audience in any way possible. And I think that's just the perfect way to use this time to connect with people still one-on-one without diminishing how serious everything is right now as well. I think the key is finding the balance between acknowledging what's going on without lingering on the negative news. Acknowledging that we're all in this together and looking for ways to contribute and bring joy is the best way to show up for our people. Certainly, hiding and ignoring what's going on can be a little insensitive. And ultimately, what we will remember about this time is the people, the brands, the businesses who got creative and kept showing up for us. But what happens when you don't feel you have the energy or the motivation to show up? I think everyone's gone through ebbs and flows with this. And if you need to take a break, take a break. Of course, I teach social media, I teach Instagram, but I also think like if you're not in a good place mentally, then you're not going to be able to show up well for your audience anyway. So if you need to take a day off stories or a week off stories or a few weeks or a month to regroup, that's totally fine. I think it's great to be honest and vulnerable and real with your audience. I know a lot of people have said that they've really appreciated me talking about how I'm implementing self-care right now, how I've kind of overbooked myself where everyone's talking about, oh, you have so much extra time. And I'm like, oh, wow, I actually have not more time magically. It doesn't really happen like that. Just think of how you can take care of others, but also just being conscious of how you can take care of yourself. Even though we run businesses and there is a certain degree of professionalism expected, we are humans and we go through the same emotions as our clients, audience, and community. But how do you find the balance between continuing to offer value while showing your human side? I think it totally depends. Um, Sometimes I'm just open and real about it, but I think with authenticity, you always want there to be a lesson. So I might say, you know, like I went on stories today and I'm like, hey, I have a lot of calls, a lot of things going on today. So I might not be on stories a ton, but I'm still going to show you parts of my day. So even though I'm not like talking and showing up, I'm still giving people something that they can be inspired by. But yeah, sometimes it means like taking off. I feel like I'm always keep my weekends very sacred to taking off, especially with stories. And I think that always kind of rejuvenates you when you're going into a new week and you want to show up in more ways. Whether you're a content creator, podcaster, or a business, we all try to plan our content weeks or months ahead. Our content calendar for the next few weeks is filled with interviews, episodes, and videos we don't think are longer relevant or that may be insensitive in the light of the latest events. So what do we do with our pre-recorded content? For us, podcasters making our pre-scheduled content relevant can be as easy as changing the intro and providing a disclaimer that we recorded the interview or the episode before COVID-19 or changing the order in which the episodes were scheduled to be released and release episodes that are more relevant and needed. So halfway through our conversation, I decided to switch gears and pick Natasha's brain about Instagram strategy. Instagram is a great platform to promote your podcast and find new listeners. Many podcasters get frustrated with Instagram because they don't see quick results. But Instagram, like any other social media platform, requires us to have a strategy and be consistent. So here are some of Natasha's best Instagram tips. So I think it's just so important to use all parts of Instagram. So I use lives, IGTV, my feed, and stories to really make sure I'm getting the most out of the platform. 
One really big thing is I'm always trying to tell a story. So making sure whether it's on my stories, my IGTV videos, or even on my feed, like how can it have a very clear beginning, a middle to it, and then an end? Like making sure you're drawing people into the beginning of whatever you're offering, whether it's like the first line of your caption, it's the first slide of your stories, if it's right when people hop on a live stream, or even if people are tuning into a longer form IGTV video. Like how can you draw in their attention at first offer tons of value, and always adding some type of call to action. I think call to actions are really important, not only when you're promoting something, but even if you just want engagement, I think it's really important to think of social media as being social. But some people need to be reminded to save things, to share things, to comment, to like, all those different types of things so you can have that back and forth conversation. And overall, I really focus on organic growth because I think relationship building is really important. So how can I reply back to every single comment, always being in my direct messages and using voice messages or videos and just being really generous with my time and just having conversations, like especially with stories, using polls, using stickers, making things very interactive. I feel like I guess like storytelling and just community in general are the big focuses that I have for my content. And just in general, what the content I create is just being really creative and having fun with it. I don't take it too seriously, but I also make sure it's very on brand. I always think it's important to establish usually like five categories that all of your content is going to be around. So it's very structured in that way. But I love to play with tons of different tools like you've mentioned, whether it's for video editing or trying out adding memes or just different things and just making sure it's fresh and fun and I don't get into the habit of posting all of the type, same type of things, but I'm keeping it current and, and just keeping it lighthearted as well. Many podcasters don't think about their podcast as a brand. They start podcasting sometimes as a hobby without thinking about developing a brand. Having a brand for your podcast is important. It helps with discoverability and brand association. Instagram is a great platform to start experimenting with colors, fonts, images, and audiograms to develop your brand identity. However, having a strong brand is the key to build a solid strategy on social media and experience steady growth. You definitely need a strong brand to then build your strategy and your podcast off of. And you probably have one. You just need to chisel away everything to really find what it is. So colors, fonts, all those types of things are important, but kind of getting deeper, we're kind of how I mentioned in the beginning where you want to have your morals and ethics. What are words you think about when you think of your brand? What are parts of you that are part of your podcast as well? And thinking of those five categories, because even though a lot of my categories has to do with business and social media and Instagram, I also have some of my categories for my content is just like mental health and wellness and lifestyle with being an entrepreneur or just supporting my local community and other people in the community of entrepreneurs. So I think just you need to look at it holistically and know there can be supporting factors like your cats and dogs, but there also can be the important things like what are words you think of? What is your tone? What is, how do you speak to people? I always say have branded emojis. It's something people don't think about, but what are emojis that show your brand? So I use like colors and like the hugging emojis and like the praise hands. And that's like a part of how I speak and a part of my brand. So how can you bring apart all of those words and elements and your voice and what really makes you essentially as a podcast host, as like a personal brand to make that your brand on Instagram? And I think if you struggle with creating content or thinking of how to show up, having that solid base will make it so much easier. Instagram has many cool features that can help you develop your podcast brand, grow your listeners, and build a community around your podcast. But getting familiar with all these features and managing them at the same time can require us to put a lot of hours into it. Don't try to use every Instagram feature at once if you're a beginner. Start with those that will help you get noticed the most and that will attract your people. What about Instagram stories? Us podcasters avoid Instagram stories like the plague. There's a reason why some of us started with podcasting and not video. We feel safe behind the microphone. We don't have to show our faces to give the listeners a worthwhile experience. 
But all of a sudden, we're pushed into making little videos to either promote our podcast or to show our creative process or bits and pieces of our personal life. Getting comfortable in front of the camera and posting on Instagram stories can be so painfully awkward and unnatural, but it's another tool you can use to connect with your audience. So Instagram stories, let's tackle them head on. When it comes to just like confidence on stories is know that we don't come out of the womb being able to go on stories. Like it's not natural. It's not natural to talk to a phone and think that there's other people on the other side. So except that it's kind of a weird thing to get used to. And kind of the biggest shift happened for me is when I thought less about all the concerns I had about myself, what other people would think about me, but rather how me showing up on stories can inspire or teach someone something. I feel like when I kind of started to think of it as like a part of being serviced, I kind of, all those worries kind of go away. If you're like, if I show up on stories one time today and it makes someone else's day better, it makes it so worth my time. The other thing is just making it a part of my routine really helps. So every morning before I hop into work, I go on stories. And so that's really just a part of my routine. I'm always storing content. I think that's important in general, but especially when it comes to stories, if I get questions or if I see an article or if I have a a random content idea, I'm always storing that. So for days that I don't maybe have an idea for something for stories, I can then show up on that and that really helps. So I'd say a lot of things with stories is they can be kind of very off the cusp, but having it being very habitual makes it where you are showing up as frequently as possible because while on feed doesn't have to be all the time, I'd say for stories, it has to be daily if you can. It was so nice connecting with Natasha. I've been isolated from the world, so talking to her was a breath of fresh air. I Instagram stalk Natasha to find inspiration and the latest fun apps and tools. The good thing is that you can do it too. This is how you can find her. So you can find me at the Shine Online Podcast if you want to tune into my show. And then at Soul Studio Marketing, S-O-L, if you want to follow me on Instagram, chat with me. Um, I'm hanging out there all the time. So would love to connect. And there you have it, Potskis. I hope after listening to this episode, you felt inspired to keep going with your content creation. I know I've said this so many times the last couple of weeks but allow me to overindulge. This isn't the time to slow down and let our circumstances define us. When everybody else is slowing down and focusing on their losses, we Potskis focus on learning new skills, working hard and getting our projects off the ground. So when this is over, we get back into the world stronger than ever. So if you're ready to start your podcast, which I know you are, head over to Podcasting Smart dot com and sign up for our course smart and sexy podcast launch for seven weeks you will have my smarts and studio steve sexy by your side helping you launch that podcast you've been dreaming of okay and until next time stay cozy and sanitized happy casting